All right, so this will be uh, a guided answer key creation for uh, Organic Chemistry 2, Exam 2, from March 3rd, 2017. Uh, so we'll go over the written portion uh, from version to version. And then in a separate video, we'll go over the multiple choice. So 1A, give uh, a structure from the name. So propylene glycol, or 1,2-propane diol, is a glycol, so the two hydroxyl groups are on neighboring carbon atoms. They're vicinal to one another. And we're going to want to make this the R enantiomer. So this is A, B, C clockwise. If D were down, it would be R. So we would show the OH being wedged up. Phenylacetic acid, remember acetic acid is the two carbon carboxylic acid, also known as ethanoic acid, but definitely more commonly known as acetic acid. And if you were to add a phenyl substituent on the alpha carbon, it would be phenyl acetic acid. And I think that in lecture we talked about how this is the smell of farm animals, specifically elephants. 1C uh, is the polar a protic solvent that we discussed a lot, uh, dimethylformamide, also known as DMF. And so this is an amide of formic acid. So formic acid was methanoic acid. And so the amide with two uh, methyl groups indicated by the location of the dimethyl portion. And for the uh, structure to name on the B version, here we had secondary butyl propionate. And so this is going to be the secondary butyl ester of the three carbon carboxylic acid propanoate or propionic acid. Uh, and so we've got one, two, three carbons, and then the alkoxy portion would be the secondary butyl group bonded to the oxygen. And so this is secondary butyl propionic acid ester known as secondary butyl propionate. B, valeroyl chloride. So this is the, the five carbon carboxylic acid, valeric acid, also known as pentanoic acid, where you've got the OH here. Um, you, we've changed the oic acid ending to oil chloride to indicate that this is the acid chloride derivative of valeric acid. Cis-2,3-dimethyloxyrane, so oxyrane, remember, is our three-membered cyclic ether, also known as an epoxide, and we always start numbering at the heteroatom, so carbon atoms two and three are the locations for the methyl group, and they are cis on the same side of the epoxide ring system. So now from the uh, structures provide the correct name for the following organic molecules, and so for the first one, remember that this is a, a secondary alcohol, so we want to number the carbon uh, with the OH as fast as possible. Uh, and also note that uh, this pentyl substituent off of the cyclobutane ring would not be named as that uh, because there are five carbons coming off of the four-membered ring. So this is named, this cyclobutane is named as a cyclobutyl substituent. And so this would be 3-methyl uh, over here. So this is 1-cyclobutyl by alphabet. 3-methyl, and then you must also supply the locant of the OH, 1-butanol. The OL suffix indicating an alcohol. B. So most common mistake is to name this Carbon nitrogen triple bond is a cyano group, but this is uh, the group of highest priority in this example where the uh, carbon one of the nitrile is part of the cyano group itself. So this is a pentane nitrile, and carbon three has a bromine atom with the R configuration. So it's three bromo. pentane nitrile. 
C, very clearly we have a tertiary amide here. We've got a methylene benzene ring, so this is our benzyl group. And when the benzene ring is bonded to the nitrogen directly, we call this a phenyl. And the longest carbon chain of our amide shows that this is a, a six carbon amide, so this is a hexanoic acid derivative, also known as a caproic acid derivative, and we would say that this is hexane amide. So this is alphabetically N-benzyl, N-phenyl, hexane amide. Note that we drop the E uh, in between hexane and amide because we don't want two vowels next to each other. For version A structure to name, here we have a methyl ester and we have a methyl ester of valeric acid or pentanoic acid. So this has the common name methyl valerate or we could also say methyl pentanoate or pentanoate. B is an amine and so we would want to number it as the longest chain so this is going to be a hexane amine where carbon 2 would be the location of the amino nitrogen and bonded to that amino nitrogen are a tertiary butyl group and a benzyl group and we would say that this has the R configuration, so this is 2R, nitrogen group A, B, C, clockwise group D down, therefore it's R. And the location of the tertiary butyl group is given by capital italicized N. Uh, oh, but alphabetically we would want to list benzyl first. So this would be N-benzyl, n tertiary butyl. Remember the tertiary part is not considered or factored into the alphabetization. It's BU here versus BE, benzyl versus butyl. And then this would be N-benzyl, N-tert butyl, 2-hexane amine. Note the difference in N versus D. This is an amine tertiary amine. C, this is the acid chloride of benzoic acid, so we replace the oic acid suffix with oil chloride. So this is benzoyl chloride. You could have also said benzene carbonyl chloride, although benzoyl chloride is certainly preferred. Next uh, was draw the SN1 mechanism uh, between 2-methyl-3-butane, 2-ol, that's this molecule here, uh, with concentrated 48% 40, by weight hydrobromic acid in water, so hydronium bromide. So it asked for you to draw the intermediates, and it gave in words, in words, the steps. So you want to pay very close attention to how the words are describing this. And as I mentioned for exam one, you may want to draw the product first. That way it's very obvious where you're going. So lastly, three gives the product one bromo, three methyl, two butene. So it might be best to draw that first. So you've got one, two, three, four. Carbon two has the carbon-carbon double bond. Carbon three has a methyl group. So this is neither E nor Z. And carbon one has the bromine atom. Right, so this is our product, and so we want to get there. And so the first step is that we're protonating. Here our arrows even show that protonation of the tertiary allylic alcohol. And so then we would want to show our protonated alcohol, also known as an oxonium ion. Step two is then loss of water. So we would show the carbon-oxygen bond breaking with water being lost to give a tertiary allylic carbocation, which is resonance stabilized. So we could draw resonance arrow. Here we've got a tertiary allylic carbocation, and here we've got a primary allylic carbocation. 
and the major organic product results as the kinetic product and bromide ion adds into that vacant 2p orbital of the allylic primary allylic carbocation to give you uh, the major SN1 product, 1 bromo, 3 methyl, 2 butene in 64% yield. The mechanism on version B, similarly, uh, here the product was drawn, so if you had trouble drawing the oxocarbocation intermediate, note that the very last step is deprotonation, so you could have just simply protonated the carbonyl in order to show the oxocarbocation. So this is a a trick if you're not able to follow along in the forward direction, but let's show how we got there. So the first step was protonation of either of the tertiary alcoholic hydroxyl groups by uh, hydronium, or we could have shown sulfuric acid, but clearly we are protonating one of the OHs, so we are adding a positively charged proton, so we get a positively charged oxonium ion. And then loss of water, so we're breaking this carbon-oxygen single bond. To give a tertiary carbocation. And we said that what's more stable than a tertiary carbocation is something that could be resonance stabilized. And so we could either uh, realize this because we can perform a 1-2 methide shift to reveal a resonance stabilized carbocation. Uh, we could show it with one arrow or we could say that these lone pair of electrons on oxygen are pushing the methyl group over. Uh, but with just this one arrow showing the 1,2 methide shift, the, re -re the rearrangement of the carbocation, uh, we can clearly see that positive charge is now on the carbon with the hydroxyl group and the methyl group is now shifted over. And then simply loss of uh, the proton, most likely by the water that left, then delivers the major organic product known as pinacolone, uh, and this occurs in 72% yield. All right, so now on to reactions. This is the uh, first set of reactions on version A, and so for A, what's occurring is that you have two equivalents of acetyl chloride reacting with uh, this alkynyl diol. And so each of these alcohols is going to be esterified. So an alcohol plus an acid chloride gives an ester. There are two equivalents of acetyl chloride, so you'll get the uh, acetate ester at both of the oxygen atoms. The pyridine is there to soak up the generated HCl. So our byproduct would be pyridinium chloride. And so without moving the atoms in place, we show that we've made now the acetate esters. The alkyne triple bond remains intact. And if we wanted, although it was not required, we could also show the two equivalents of pyridinium chloride generated as a result of ester formation. B, we had an excess of HBr, so this did, uh, it converted the alcohol into the corresponding uh, benzyl bromide in both cases of the branching methylene hydroxy groups of the biphenyl molecule. And what would have happened in terms of its mechanism is we would have protonated the OH and then bromide would have performed an SN2 type displacement of water. So the purpose here was converting the hydroxide poor leaving group into water good leaving group and then bromide ion performing the SN2 type displacement on both carbon atoms. And this occurs in a very high 93% yield. Here potassium carbonate deprotonates the phenol to give the phenoxide and very similarly we would say that this is a Williamson aryl ether synthesis and then lastly after you deprotonate the phenol to give the good nucleophile phenoxide it displaces bromide to then give the 
phenyl allyl ether. And I'm showing this as SN2, uh, but there's also something called SN2 prime, uh, which if you're so inclined, you can uh, look up elsewhere, but I'm not going to show it here. D, so here we have the arene oxide of benzene, so most likely benzene was oxidized by uh, cytochrome P450. And here we have acidic conditions where a double dagger indicates that we need to show two products. And so uh, the first product that we could show is that by nucleophilic attack on the epoxide. So here water attacks uh, the protonated epoxide, you're under acidic conditions, and so it's going to attack backside in an SN2 fashion to spring open that epoxide to get the uh, one, two, trans diol. And then the other product would be from the rearrangement known as the NIH shift, standing for the National Institute of Health, where this was observed in their, one of their laboratories. In E, now, a primary amine is going to attack the less sterically hindered carbon of the epoxide. Remember we said that uh, neutral nucleophiles and negatively charged nucleophiles will attack the less sterically hindered carbon of an epoxide. On the other hand, if you had a positively charged environment, that is to say an acidic environment, it, the nucleophile will attack the more substituted carbon that's better able uh, to support a positive charge. But here, the neutral nucleophile is going to attack the less hindered carbon of our epoxide. It springs open, and then after a very rapid proton transfer event, you get the beta amino alcohol. Uh, and remember, we talked a lot about this in terms of beta blocking medications. F asterisk to indicate stereochemistry. So here, uh, the secondary alcohol is converted into the sulfonate ester by reagent of para sulfonyl chloride. So you get initially the tosylate and the point of that was to convert the hydroxyl group into a fantastic leaving group. And in the second step, cyanide ion is going to act as a good nucleophile, come in anti to our tosylate leaving group, and in an SN2 style, displace our tosylate and give an inversion of stereochemistry to give the following nitrile. G, so just as we mentioned, under acidic conditions, you protonate the epoxide and the nucleophile, in this case methanol, is going to attack the carbon that more closely resembles the tertiary carbocation, that's this carbon has a greater concentration of partial positive charge. So it attacks the more substituted carbon. Again, it's going to approach anti to the oxygen carbon bond of the epoxide. And so we get an inversion of stereochemistry where the methyl group is now up. Uh, the methyl ether after loss of a proton is down and our OH is up of the secondary alcohol. H, uh, this is a nice synthesis um, of uh, a natural product acid. And so what happens here in H is that KOH in water, 95% ethanol is there simply to dissolve the organics. Um, Transesterification, you could potentially say, is observed. However, is then further hydrolyzed. Uh, it's base catalyzed by potassium hydroxide. So this is the base catalyzed hydrolysis of the methyl ester to give the carboxylate. Uh, but we were also accepting the free carboxylic acid as well for full credit. Although the carboxylate, according to these conditions, would exist until you worked up the reaction with acid. I, here we have trichloroacetic acid plus thionyl chloride And thionyl chloride will convert carboxylic acids into the corresponding acid chloride. So this would be trichloroacetyl chloride. 
J, J under dry conditions in methylene chloride with pyridinium chlorochromate, abbreviated PCC, will oxidize the primary alcohol of butanol, 1-butanol, to give the aldehyde butanol, also known as butyraldehyde. Oops. K, here the OH group displaces a chlorine on phosphorus oxychloride. You then get this chlorophosphate leaving group and pyridine acts as a base in an E2 concerted fashion to remove the beta proton and give you the alkene elimination product via E2. There is no rearrangement observed here because there is no carbocation rearrangement uh, so we would see the monosubstituted alkene as the major organic product. Now on to the reactions for version B. A, uh, at 140 to 170 degrees Celsius here, we're going to see uh, eliminations for uh, dehydration. Initially, you are going to, of this primary alcohol, see E2 elimination to an alkene, uh, which could then get uh, reprotonated by the reaction conditions, which could then undergo an E1 elimination. So the E2 elimination initial product would be the monosubstituted alkene, which would be protonated to give you the secondary carbocation, which you could then, if you wanted to show a rearrangement to the tertiary, and then lastly, uh, passive loss of that beta proton to give you the Zaitsev's product, the more substituted, stable, tri-substituted alkene. And then, of course, the byproduct at 140 degrees, we would expect uh, mostly um, the ether, just like we saw in the ether synthesis of uh, diethyl ether. And, of course, we could have shown different connectivity here. We could have shown it at the secondary carbocation or capture at the tertiary carbocation. So ether molecules in addition to these two alkenes were accepted. B, uh, so here we've got the active uh, dimeth uh, chlorodimethyl sulfonium salt involved in the Swarin oxidation, which will oxidize the primary alcohol into the aldehyde. And so here we have oxalochloride and DMSO, <clears throat> which forms this. Uh, and then with uh, the addition of tri Ethyl amine, we get the aldehyde of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1 octanol. C with an asterisk. Here, uh, oxygen adds into the phosphorus, displaces bromide after loss of uh, a proton, and um, we get the bromophosphite fantastic leaving group, bromide ion that was displaced then approaches backside to the bromite phosphide leafing group giving an inversion of stereochemistry to the up or cis 1 bromo 2 methyl cyclopentane and then sodium azide performs a subsequent SN2 reaction, which is promoted by the DMF polar aprotic solvent. So the azide ion approaches backside or anti to our bromide leaving group to give inversion of stereochemistry from the alkyl bromide and overall retention of stereochemistry rel relative to the starting alcohol. D, uh, this is paratoluene sulfonyl chloride, so oxygen acts as a nucleophile displaces chloride and you get your sulfonate ester. So this was a way to convert alcohols into fantastic leaving groups. We made the sulfonate salt. E, here we have an excess, so we will cleave the ether both at this carbon and this carbon. Uh, initially here we would see generate, after protonation we'd see generation of a tertiary carbocation rapidly captured by 
uh, the excess bromide ion, and then the primary alcohol that results will be protonated by the reaction conditions, and the SN2 displacement of water via bromide ion will give the dibromo compound. And so this is uh, cleavage of the tetrahydrofuran derivative. F, chromic acid, so this necessarily is sodium dichromate dissolved in water with the addition of sulfuric acid, will oxidize every single primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid and leave the tertiary alcohol unscathed. And what's nice about this reaction is that it generates um, citric acid. G. Here we have um, methane thiol, whose pK is around 11, uh, dissolved in methanol with potassium hydroxide. So the first um, event is an acid-base reaction between hydroxide and methane thiol to generate potassium methane thiolate. Remember, negatively charged sulfur atoms are champion nucleophiles. And when it comes to attack on epoxides, negatively charged and neutral nucleophiles uh, predominantly attack the less substituted carbon atom of the epoxide as it springs open. And so here we're going to end up with the tertiary alcohol after an acidic workup. And now we've formed a new sulfur-carbon bond to generate this thioether. H. Uh, similar to G, the first step will be an acid-base reaction, so hydroxide ion is going to pull off uh, the acidic proton from alpha naphthol, and so we can draw that here. So this is a great phenoxide nucleophile, and when this is generated, it will react with epichlorohydrin, negatively charged oxygen nucleophile of the phenoxide will attack the less sterically hindered carbon of epichlorohydrin. This then forms a new oxygen carbon bond and this intermediate does not hang out for very long because there is a subsequent intramolecular substitution where the generated alkoxide swings down to form an epoxide with the uh, concomitant disposal of chloride ion. And this occurs in 66% yield. I, so this is when we talked about potential carcinogens, arene oxides, so Aromatic hydrocarbons are oxidized by cytochrome P450 uh, to the corresponding arene oxide. So this would be the arene oxide of naphthalene. You could show uh, the arene oxide once. You could also have shown it twice on this double bond here as well. Um, and in addition to that, if you had wanted, I would have also accepted the uh, NIH shifted phenol. J, asterisk, this is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, MCPBA, and methylene chloride, so this will epoxidize our alkene of 1-methylcyclopentene to give us the corresponding epoxide. K, this is a primary amine plus an acid chloride, will generate the amide in 82% yield. And in the mechanism, what occurs is formation of a tetrahedral intermediate when the nitrogen atom attacks the incredibly electrophilic carbonyl. Proton transfer event occurs, and then a collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate spits out chloride ion. Pyridine then deprotonates the protonated amide, and you get your neutral amide product plus an equivalent of pyridinium chloride.